Good morning and welcome along to today's webinar, which is how to attract and convert more high paying clients. My name is Ian Lane and I'm going to take you through some of the strategies and um, some of the ideas that some of my inner circle clients use to help them generate more business and automate their marketing and improve the conversion rate, all that kind of stuff. So before we get started, there's three things that I think would be a great idea for you to get organized. The first one is a drink, something to drink while you're uh, while we're going along, because we'll be here for about an hour. Um, turn off all the distractions, turn off the telly, turn off the uh, email, don't be browsing the internet, and grab a pen and a piece of paper so that you can make notes and draw some diagrams. Now, let's get stuck into it. So here's the, the thing. You've got a business, you're open for business, it's going okay, but what you really need is more clients, the kind that are great to work with and they'll even pay you what you're worth. The problem is that you are stuck chasing leads and converting them just plain hard work often amounts to nothing and can be just a big waste of time. So instead of wasting your time and manually prospecting, the thing is if you're out there chasing work one to one, you run short of time and it just makes it all seem too hard and you got it makes you have a great big think about it and if you don't have a great big think about it and do something about it you could end up burning out and what's the problem when you're burning out you do less you make less you make less and if you don't pick up the right kind of lead and sales suck then you could run out of cash so that doesn't have to be that way today what I'm going to show you is a new hope remember Luke Skywalker so on okay uh, if you don't, um, there's a movie. So what I'm going to go through today is I'm going to show you why it is so. Why you're not getting enough of the right clients. Remember this guy, Professor Julius Sumner Miller, talking about Cadbury's chocolate. There's a glass and a half of milk in every bar. He's saying, how did it, how did it fit? A bit like the thermos flask. How does it know how to keep stuff warm and how to keep stuff cold? It's very clever. He's a, he was good fun, that guy. So... What we're going to go through is why you're not getting enough of the right clients. The second thing we're going to talk about is what you can do about it. I'm going to show you some of the things you can do to fix it. And at the end, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you where to go to get any help you need to achieve what you have to achieve. So with all that sorted out, that would give you cash and time and you'd be able to have the life that you want and to spend some more time with your family and achieve the things you want to achieve. Now, in the past, uh, other clients who've done these strategies and have helped pave the way for you, for you to understand how they work and, and have given us case studies, um, they've learned what's possible, gained the learnings and, and created that new future and used these strategies with great effect. So one client, a um, guy called Jeff, he bought a business. It was a financial planning business um, and he built it up over a space of about two years using a whole bunch of strategies from what we're going to talk about today and he got it to the point where he was attracting and converting the right kind of high paying clients and he's able to sell the business for over two million dollars and now he's off doing what he's always wanted to do which actually came up in the course of uh, learning these things was what he really wanted to do was go to third world countries and help put in freshwater drinking wells and helping build schools so Jeff's off doing that now and Jeff if you're listening in how you doing let us know where you're what you're up to another client who is a physiotherapist he's implemented quite a few strategies and it started off for him he was working on his own um, so what we did was we ramped up the leads and got the right kind of clients in um, got old clients coming back that sort of thing to the point where he was too busy so then he had to employ someone then with that, what he was able to do is go and buy a property, which was an ideal corner block with a you know, perfect place for him to set up a new practice. So he set up his new practice in there and kept the old one going. And now, you know, a couple of years later, probably four years later, he's got four practices and he owns the property for each of them. So he's kind of like the McDonald's of physiotherapy practices. And that gives him the freedom to do what he loves, which is staying fit and be with his family. So today... What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you everything I can to help you. And at the end, I'm going to show you where to go um, to get the help you need. So I've got a question for you right now, um, which is why why this webinar and why today? So just have a think about that. Why this webinar? Why today? 
So what you could do is just in the input box, the question and input box, you can just stick your answers in there. Excellent. So there's a little bit of a lag when these answers come in, but uh, quite a, here they go. They're starting to come in now. Excellent. So need to get more leads, want to learn to attract the right clients, um, sick of chasing people, want to have some good strategies. Um, what else we got? Yeah, so want to find out how I can automate my marketing. All right, so sure, that's what we're going to talk about. That's what I'm going to take you through to. So that's why you're here today. So why I'm here is I want to show you the system that I use, and it's a series of workshops that I do over the space of a year. They're paced out one a month, and each of the workshops is really powerful, and it can help you achieve this automated marketing um, machine that we've been talking about. So let's have a let's have a quick peek inside here. So the first thing we've got to have is think about this. We're attracting and converting, and it's a bit of a balancing act. You know, like if you can't convert, then there's no point in attracting, and if you can't attract, there's no point in converting. So we have to be able to do both, and we don't go attracting a whole bunch of clients and then try and convert them and find out we can't convert. So what we do is we we work along a little path that takes us a bit here, a bit there, a bit here, a bit there. So first thing is we're talking about building a marketing machine that runs on autopilot and for it to run on autopilot there's a, a set number of things we have to have and we have to do them in a specific order so here's how it works we start off with having a strategic game plan remember these guys the A team you always got to have a plan and they love it when a plan comes together so part of the plan is working out who you're appealing to so the first thing that's really critical is don't try and appeal to everyone think about niching that doesn't mean you have to niche down and um, sell to only you know one person however the narrower you make your niche the easier it is to make it clear what you've got what you do and makes it easier to find your target market now when you find that target market the next thing you gotta do is understand what their hot buttons are what is it that um, that's going to get them to stick their head up and pay attention. So we've got to figure we we've got to do that. In your plan, we've got to also make sure that when we do it, that you're not being pushy, you're not driving people away with what you're saying, and we need to have a process in place. So the problems people have is they're trying to appeal to everyone. They don't understand the hot buttons. They're being too pushy. They've got no process, and last but most important, no follow up. So it's really important to have a process in place so your plan puts that process in place so that you've got the follow-up side of things Now, next thing we've got to look at is once we've got the strategic plan in place is we've got to st start thinking about how we can convert and conversion confidence is critical and what we do is you need to qualify people because if you're dealing with the wrong people and you're not qualifying them then what you get is that tire kicker syndrome where you spend all your time with people who are not buying and you might start to think maybe people don't want to buy what I've got or maybe you know it's not good quality or maybe this or maybe that and you start to have those doubts so we have to get that confidence and the conversion confidence comes from qualification um, real estate agents do this well some real estate agents do this really well you, you know number one is they qualify is this person a motivated buyer because if they're not motivated, if they don't know what, why they're selling, if they're not motivated to sell, then chances are they maybe won't sell. So it could be a big waste of time. So for you, what we do is we put together a 10-minute consult, and usually by phone. And the 10-minute consult is about getting clear on what is the problem that this person has. So there's four steps to this. One is, what's the problem? The second one is, is what's causing the problem? So we're, we're going to be asking them questions. What's the problem? Tell me more about it, that kind of thing. So you got into their headspace and got clear on what they see the problem as. Then the next one is um, what you know, going deeper with that. You know, why is it a problem? What's the impact? What would happen if you fixed it? What would happen if you didn't fix it? That kind of thing. And 
then the, the last part of it is to uh, the next part is to offer a solution, which is you know that you know do you, you can give them some are they open to some ideas or would, can you show them something that might help with that? And the last one is is to have a next step for them. So it's it's not about pressuring people; it's about helping them and helping them. A the first part here is about qualifying them. So that's what conversion confidence is about. So it's about understanding that process and being able to do that. So once we've got conversion confidence. Um, we're ready to go to the next step. So, so far, the question is, what have you learned and what can you share? Now, had a few people uh, type in some answers here. So, let's have a look and see what they said. Um, really good, okay. Yeah, so basically it's about building trust, yeah. Um, they want to work smarter, they want to build an automatic, an autopilot business, sounds good. Yeah, all right, so let's not um, stay there, let's let's go on and have a look at the next step. So getting attention, this is the, the lead generation um, module, and in the lead generation module what we're talking about is writing a headline that, that's really going to grab someone's attention. So. If the thing to the, there's a little model that you can do this with. So if you've got a pen and a bit of paper, here's what you do: draw a triangle with the point at the top. So you've got your triangle there. Now, at the top, we're going to write result uh, reality one. Okay, so the first reality, if you're this, is what we're saying there. So reality one is at the top. Bottom right is reality two, and bottom left is the risk. So when you're writing a headline, this is a little model that you can use to do it. So first of all, if if you're this, which is reality one, and you want this, which is reality two, without this, which is risk, the the risk, then. So you see what I mean. So, for instance, if uh, if you, for a, a real estate agent, if you want to, if you're worried about getting top dollar for your house and selling it quickly, um, if you're selling your house and you want to sell it quickly for top dollar. Um, without the risk of it staying on the market for too long, then call so and so, or um, you know, he, another one is a, if you're remodeling your kitchen or if you're doing some renovation in your house and you want the best builder, you don't want to pay out of you know you don't want to pay too much, you want to have a great job done. So without that, then here's a free guide that tells you how to build how to find a builder, how to pick the person, a checklist, some of that, uh, that kind of thing. So the headlines is what's going to get people's attention. So you have to find out what people want and then build the headline around it. And with the lead machine, with my inner circle clients, there's a there's the headline bank. So if you're online here, you know about the headline bank where you can go and there's you know, nearly 200 headlines there which you can take. And I'm sure you'll find one in there which suits is pretty close to what you want to do. So the whole thing about it is when you're writing a headline, it's about getting to emotion. So if you imagine your headline is on a scale of 1 to 10, only gets 2 in emotion for the message emotion, then it's only get 2 for the client's emotion. So what we really want to do is we want to get the headline emotion up high. So we want to address that either A, what it is that they want to move towards, you know, do you want this? Or B, the thing they're moving away from, are you trying to stop this? So if we are identifying that and we're saying it in words you know so imagine the words the emotion words like you don't really like something or you can't stand something or you hate it or you absolutely without doubt cannot stand this you see the difference in emotion between I don't really like that and I can't stand that or I, oh, I hate that stuff so the higher the message emotion is the higher you're going to get the prospect emotion now remember um, the whole point of this is uh, to get people to use those high emotion words to get the emotion there because 80% of sales are based on emotion. All right, so we have to learn some more emotive words that work in your hot button. So once we've gotten attention, next thing we want to do is, the next workshop we do is one about copy that cuts through. So here's, here's an example of something that we'd work through. So. Um, this be oh yes one sort of builder so hi Bob just wanted to let you know I've written a powerful guide about choosing your builder and I'd be happy to send you a copy if you'd reply back it covers three key areas 
a seven point checklist to help find the best operator, three sneaky tricks your builder doesn't want you to know, and how to speed up your build and reduce costs. So if you've ever done any of this stuff you know that the build always takes longer than it was supposed to and always costs more than you thought it would. Again the guides are free, all you have to do is reply back and I'll send you the guide in PDF format. Have a great week in your business, Marco. So that's um, a simple, you know, it can be a letter, it can be an email, whatever it is for you. Um, you can send that stuff but the point of it is to cut through. Cut through so that it's not boring people, cut through so that it's getting to what their pain points are and have a magnet there, have what we call the client magnet or the money magnet which is the, the guide that you're offering to send them. So there we go, we, we, that's the copy that cuts through. So once you've done that then we have to get it out there and when people start looking they're going to start looking on the internet and Google is there 24 7 365, 24 days a week, 7 days a week, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days of the year. Now. When people type in um, sign writer, kitchen remodeler, um, what else could they type in? Yeah, you know, a financial planner, advisor, business advisor, consultant, accountant. When they look in these things up, they type it into Google and they might even type their local suburb, you know. So they, they type it in and they put their local suburb in and up comes a whole bunch of results. Now the thing is, are you in there? Maybe, maybe not. So maybe you need to do some search engine optimization. But here's something we do in the um, so in the online marketing machine um, module. What we do is local search engine domination. So if you've looked at it, you'll have seen things like Yelp and True Local and Yellow Pages, and there's a whole bunch of them that come up. And what we do is we're going to go to that. If you go if you look up True Local and look for yourself you'll see in there there's they've actually set a space aside for you. So you can actually create like a mini web page there with all your information and an offer that if people are Googling you and that comes up they can look there instead of saying, you know, nothing, it's actually an advert and it's free. So what we do is I've got a list of the top twenty um which we must do and a list of the top hundred which we should do. But if you went through and filled out the details in those top 100 search local search engines and you want to dominate your local search so if people are looking with your suburb name you know sign writer coburn uh, financial planner you know wembley such and such ultimo wherever wherever you are whatever your um suburb whatever you want to dominate if if they type that in then a you're going to come up and b you're going to be in all those local searches now what happens is Google loves that and it sees you've got lots of backlinks and links to other places so what it does is it ranks you higher organically as that so you're not paying for any um, anything to get you up the rankings just that so the other thing we do in online marketing domination is talk about SEO search engine optimization where we um, I show you how to um, how to find the keywords that are going to help you again for free organically rise your rankings up as high as you can because you really need to be looking at getting on the first page. Um, a simple way of doing that is to find your three biggest competitors, go and copy their keywords, stick them into your website and um, wherever they turn up you're going to turn up. So now we've covered search engine domination and we're on the way to the next page, next step which is they've arrived at your website. Hey how you doing? Ever gone into a shop and you walk in and my usual um, mode of operation is I go in, I turn left and I walk around the shop from left all the way around looking for what I want and if there's a couple of aisles I might do a bit of a zigzag up and down there and I scan, 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 look, 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 trying to find what I want. No one comes to help me, I can't see what I want so I leave. Guess what, your website's just like that too. Statistics are that people arrive at your website and they stay on average seven seconds. That's no good. What's even worse is they leave. What's even worse is 92% of them don't come back. So that's pretty scary if you're doing a whole load of advertising and bringing people into your website and then they're not coming back. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh yeah, maybe. So we have to think about what makes your website convert. So imagine this, imagine all your advertising was advertising to monkeys. And the monkeys were, what's a monkey like? Bananas. So you say, 
go to my website and you'll get a banana. And I have to thank my mate Taki for the for this uh, analogy. I, I, it's stuck in my head and uh, it's, it's like a visual for me. I, I love it. So they see it and they go, oh, bananas. They're at Ian's website. So they go to Ian's website looking for the banana. All they want is a banana. They don't want anything else. They don't want all the other junk. They don't want to have to sift through, run up and down aisles. They don't want to be clicking left, right and centre. They want the, don't want distractions, any of that stuff. They just want the banana. So have a look at your website and see if yours has plainly got the banana right there in front of it. If not, then this workshop about website conversion is for you where you're going to learn to identify what the banana is, identify how to put it where it needs to be so that the monkey can find it when they arrive there. Okay, so now we've done, you've got your website and it works. So we've done all this marketing, we've got their attention, we've got search domination so when you go and people Google you, that kind of thing, they can find you. Now the question I've got for you is, what's been of most value for you so far? If you could just go to the um, go to the questions bar and type some things in, that would be great. Great, okay. So one of the things you can do is you can check your website and you can check your Google Analytics and find out what what are people looking at? What is, um, you know, how many people am I getting? How many re new visitors? How many return visitors? How long are they staying on my site for? What are they clicking on? So Google Analytics gives you all that kind of um, information. So the thing is for you to have a look at that and be able to check that out. So we've got here some people saying reality one, reality two, risk triangle is good to have in mind. Absolutely, for sure. Um, how to change my website. Yeah. Um, offer free information, quality information to build relationship and trust. Yeah. Um, having your website being um, a silent salesperson. Yeah, absolutely. Check out the stats on my website more often. Yeah, abs that's right. Um, to attract the client and entice them to ask questions to make contacts and it, it causes the client to call you. So yeah, so there's a clear cut strategy. Yeah, thanks. So absolutely, those are those are the things that we've been talking about and that's where we're up to so far. So next, we've got to talk about how do you automate this because if you don't automate it, it's the old story. You go out marketing, chasing the work, chasing the work, and then you've got to go do the work, do the work. And while you're doing the work, you can't chase the work, and while you're chasing the work, you can't do the work. So you've got this seesaw, chase the work, do the work, chase the work, do the work. So the whole idea of this is, will this replace the chasing? Maybe. Will it replace some of it? Yeah, absolutely it will. Um, so it's about automating some of it so that even when you're so busy and so distracted or you're on holiday or you're sleeping or something like that that's not chasing the work that the work's actually actually coming to you so isn't that a good idea hell yeah so so what we're talking about is automatic follow-up autopilot so to do that we have to have a system and an online CRM client relationship management system is the perfect thing for that there's a whole bunch of them there's um, free ones like Zoho and MailChimp. Um, there's um, I use one called Infusionsoft, which is uh, is a really good one. There's um, and MailChimp and Zoho do. You can pay for versions of that as well. Now the thing that you want is to be able to send an email to a bulk of people. So you obviously we've got to build a database. So you build a database, um, send emails to a whole bunch of people, and having the CRM lets you see how many you sent out, when you sent them, who got them, if you put a link on it for them to click, who clicked on the link, or if you put a document on them on there for them to open or read, who did that. So basically it lets you see is there effect in what you're doing. And you can measure it from that. Now the other thing is if you um, get a, a CRM that allows you to do what they call autoresponders and set up sequences and nurture campaigns you can systemize for consistency there. So that means that if someone goes to your website and you say, I'll give you this free guide, all you have to do is put in your details here. Now the guide's got to be of value. So they think, hey, you know, I do want to know what's those sneaky tricks the builders are trying to pull on me. So you put your name and address and your email address on there, click send it to me, it puts you into the system and you get your banana. You get the, the thing sent to you. Now, the thing with that is, is you then go into can put someone into what they call a nurture campaign which has got a set of autoresponders so it might have email that gets sent every um, 
every five days for three weeks. So you get, you know, probably four emails in that space of time. And what that does is helps build rapport, but it also keeps the, the prospect in the loop of some of the most the, the stuff that's interesting to them. So having those autoresponders, for this webinar, many of you would have uh, received um, emails on a regular basis, eh, till you're saying the webinar was on, so you could register, and then when you registered, you would go into another campaign, which was one just telling you the webinar's coming, make sure you're ready, reminders, all that kind of stuff. So having those autom imagine trying to follow, you know, what do we got? 47 people on this webinar, and I did one yesterday with um, a few more than that on it. So you've got all these people, Imagine trying to follow them up by phone call or remembering to email everybody or that kind of thing. It's it, very difficult. Whereas with this system, you can do that. So setting up your automatic uh, follow-up system means that you've got it working on autopilot. So the next step is you've got the inquiries coming in. Now you've got to start thinking about converting again. So remember my old mate Arthur Daly, closing without closing. So it's about learning how to do a no pressure close and you know there's the pushy salesman, there's the order taker salesman that just waits for you to buy it, there's the um, overseller that just can't help themselves and then there's the solution provider. So if we learn how to do that what we can do is we can turn a casual request for information into a sales appointment and that's when we go back to the 10 minute phone consult. So how do we do that? So someone's made a casual request for information there's four steps to it. The first one is for you to find out specifically what the problem is and what you're doing here is qualifying again. So there's no point in trying to sell to someone who doesn't want to buy, so you're qualifying. So you qualify the people and by asking questions um, about the problem. So what is the problem? Tell me more about that. What else? What else? What else? That kind of stuff. So you find out what the problem is. The next step is, step two is to go deep. And you, so you ask them, so why is that a problem? Why is that a challenge? What's the impact? What would happen if you fixed it? What would happen if you didn't fix it? And what, you know, so how important is it to you on a scale of one to 10? What's the priority in fixing this here? So by getting that, you've gone deep with it. And, and the first one is asking about, when you're asking about the problem, that's the, the head side of things. The going deep about why and the impact and what would happen in the priority level is getting into the heart side of it. So once you've done that, you can then go to the next step, which is step three, which is to become their trusted advisor and, and ask them a question like, would you be open to some ideas or a new idea or a solution to that? So they're saying yes to that, obviously. Um, then you go to the next bit, which is the next step, which is a free or a paid consult and agree to meet. So basically that's taking a casual request, asking a bunch of questions to qualify and then offering to... Um, you know your 10 minute consult or your uh, paid consult or whatever it is you do so that's a workshop we do all about closing and again take a template fill it out and specifically come up with what would work for you in your business alright so now we're doing closing without closing we've got let's zoom back here we've got a game plan we know who we're targeting we know what we're targeting all that kind of stuff We've learned how to convert, we've got our 10 minute um, phone consult and now we've worked out how do we get attention by do, for doing lead generation so we, we're writing headlines and we're getting clear on what people want, what they don't want and how we can supply a solution to it. We do copy that cuts through so that when they're reading it we're, giving them, we're telling them what the banana is that they can come and get. Uh, we've done our search domination so that if you're being googled people start to find you. Uh, when they do find you, they go to your website, and your website converts. It doesn't reject them, which is really important. Then we build an automatic follow-up system. So we've got a CRM, a way of um, automatically making sure they get looked after. And then we did the no-pressure close. So you've done, you're doing all this. Now the next thing is to ramp it up a little bit. So we start looking at joint ventures. How can you work with someone else? How can you find another business that deals with your target market that you could do something together where you might um, market together you know you might do a workshop together you might do a um, you know offer a solution that where both of you have a solution they've got their database you've got yours those sort of things so what it is is about finding great opportunities and synergizing with other people so we do a workshop on how you can do that 
Then, once we've done that, we also have another workshop on referral-based business. Now, with this one, a, a large number of people that I deal with um, go to networking events and they do have clients that refer to them passively. So what we're talking about build, is building an active referral-based strategy. Um, and it's about how to target and enroll people to give you referrals for your business. Um, my sort of thoughts on networking used to be, I think I'd rather stick bicycle spokes in my eyes than go to networking. I hated it. You know, the evening ones drinking uh, poor wine and eating deep fried um, spring rolls and that were cold and just and talking. So it was like net socialising, not, not networking. Or going to the breakfasts, you know, and um, having stodgy fried breakfasts and sitting beside somebody, uh, you know, I didn't even know them or, you know, there was no connection or anything. I, you know, I, that's how I used to feel about it. But then when I thought about it, I thought, well, hang on a minute. This, uh, it, these, all these people are here for the same reason as me. Turns out they're not. But um, all these people are here for the same reason as me. They want to build their business. And so... What I did was I worked out some strategies and worked out a way by which to enrol and get referrals from those groups. Obviously, it made it easier for me to refer to them as well. So it was a, it became a two-way street and it turned it into a much more powerful thing. So now it's not about the, the wine and the spring rolls or the stodgy breakfast. It's not about any of that. It's about who's in this group that I can help, who's in this group that can help me, who's in this group that we could work together to help a mutual you know, client. Who's who's who can I take my clients to that this other person can help? So, when you build a referral based business, it's uh, around looking at how does your client refer? How do you refer? How does how can you refer with networking? Another thing about the referral based business: imagine you plant a seed. That's like when you first work with a new client. The seed you plant there is. So, how did you find out about me, Bob? And Bob says blah 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 whatever he said he did and you say well that's interesting because 90 percent of our business it comes from referrals or from word of mouth so what you're doing is planting the seed with bob that word of mouth that you get referrals now ideally what you would say at that point is it, who, who do you know that i should be talking to about having a new kitchen getting their signage done about financial advice whatever your business is so who do you know that I should be talking to? So they might say, oh, can't think of anybody. You say, well, just have a think about it. So then after you've planted a seed, to get it to grow, you have to water it. So you start watering the seed, and um, as you're watering it and it starts to grow, you say, hey, Bob, um, how's this going for you? And Bob says, yeah, it's going great. You say, you're not just saying that to pull my leg. No, great. Who, um, who do you know that? Who else do you know that? should be doing this as well or should have this or I should be building a kitchen or talking to that kind of thing and Bob might have someone he might not but if he doesn't you can say well have a think about it so you keep watering the plant and same as you're doing the job and then the the tree grows and it starts to bear fruit and Bob's there you finish the job for him you say Bob are you happy with the job he says yes I'm happy with it you say are you sure you're happy yes I'm sure I'm happy you're not just saying that because I'm standing here, are you? No, 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 I really like it. Really? Yeah. Is it the sort of job you would, you know, if someone asked you, you'd recommend me to them? She said, yeah, 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 of course I would. Okay, so who do you know? Who's the next person I should be talking to? And he might say, I don't know. I say, well, have a think about it. Surely it's got to be, you know, a, a friend, a relative, you know, someone at work. Is it? There's got to be someone that's talking about it. Because that's it's about planting that seed and not being too pushy but basically the whole thing is that you want to be if you put your hand in your heart and say i do a really good job with what i do then you don't want the this person's friend to go somewhere else you want them to come to you so what we're trying to do is keep the money and the family sort of thing so building a referral based business that's what we're we're trying to achieve with that so we've gone through and we've you know, you should have drawn a couple of little diagrams. Um, we've, you should have taken some notes. What I want to ask you is, what have you learned so far and what can you share? Oh, that's a bit quick. Okay. 
some yeah I want to build a marketing machine that runs on autopilot um, don't chase prospects I like the referral tree uh, to attract the client and entice them to ask questions and make contact a clear-cut strategy check my stats more often um, great stuff uh, planting seeds having a good online oh yeah good online presence offer free quality information to build relationship and trust yeah that's a great one uh, how to change a website yes be efficient yeah build an autopilot website as they say the fortune is in the follow-up ask for referrals I need new signage okay all uh, good stuff Bruce I'll put you in touch with uh, John afterwards so is that there's a few of the things that you and other people are getting out of it so the thing about it is is when you um, when you're looking at this sort of thing is I don't know why you're here it might be because you just wanted to you had an hour to spare it might be because it was free it might be because you, you are sick of chasing prospects and you want to go from running after people and wasting time to dealing with people that are qualified and become the right client it might be that you know your conversion has been low and you're not realizing that you know what it is and not having a strategy for doing that so you want to convert it to higher it may be that you've got totally manually prospecting and it's just taking up all your time and you want to make it more automatic it could be any number of those things but the obvious you know so that's um that's it. So the obvious question is, you can you can do it fast or you can do it slow. Which one do you want to do? Now, rather than answer that question, what I want to do is I want to show you what my solution is. And here's what it looks like. It's called the the lead machine is the, is the program, and you can join the inner circle of the lead machine. And what it is, it's a, a monthly webinar with fast-paced, powerful strategy sessions, plus a monthly members live Q&A call now where, um, and on that call you can go there and you can ask questions you get live coaching around your question and some great solutions and very powerful sessions those ones so monthly webinar with all with the session and then Q&A call um, very good you know very important to have both of them because one of them is about learning the stuff and the other one's about your questions about implementing it so that it helps fill that gap each month each workshop, say the, the website conversion workshop, you get a template. I'll teach you how to do it. I'll give you a template. We fill out the template together on the workshop so that at the end of it, you've got a good draft of what you want to do. So you could go to your web guy and say, hey, this is what I want. Or if you do your web yourself, you can do it yourself, whichever works for you. So that's that's how it works. Now, it's all about becoming part of something. So if you join the Inner Circle, what you do is you get monthly live webinars and members only access to the recordings you can review and learn from them at your own pace and all for only $198 and if you don't like it and if it's not for you then let me know and I'll refund your money plus five bucks so that you can say to people hey you know Ian's a good guy right so today I've got an offer for you if you join today and get th you get three months access for only $99 a month so it was $198 a month Join today and get three months access for only $99 a month, so that's half price. So the bonus is, if you're one of the first 12 to register, you'll receive a one-hour consultation with me, and that will show you how to get super focused on getting the most out of this. All right, so $198 for the inner circle to join the, the inner circle. Um, guaranteed that if you don't like it, you get your money back. Um, join today and get three months access for $99 a month. I'd be one of the first 12 to register and receive a one-hour consultation. So that's that's the that's what what I think is the great solution for you. So then, like I said in the earlier on the workshop, you got to have a next step. So the next step is if you go to the website ianlane.com.au forward slash lead machine, all one word, click on that, it'll open up a page where you can register. So as I say, if you get in there and you're one of the first 12 to register this month, then you will. It's, sorry, if you're first, one of the first 12 to register, then um, you'll get that free one-hour consult with me. So, a few
few people have registered. John, thanks for that. Great stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, that's... Yes, John, I will send you through Bruce's contact details. Yeah, Tom, welcome aboard. Awesome. All right, look, uh, time's up. We have to end the webinar now, but um, I want to thank you all for coming along, and uh, you've got that link so that you can go and... Um, so you can go and register uh, if you've got um, yeah so the other thing that will happen is that the recording of this webinar will be made available to you so if you want to go back through and listen to it and pick up any stuff that you missed out then please do and I'll talk to you soon thank you bye